well, again, I'm, I'm quite self-contained here. As you can see, I'm in my own, my own bubble. Um, touch wood, COVID-free bubble. So I've been behind screens for my, most of my life. So <laughs> it's not, not a massive blow to me having a screen in front of me. Um, and again, you know, I think it's probably important that from behind the drum kit, when I'm on stage or whether I'm in the studio, I can see everything that's going on. You know, over there I've got Steve Rothery and Steve Rothery Corner. Then right in front of me, behind you, is, is uh, Pete. Got Mark there, so I can see all three. And if I lean back a fraction, I can see Steve H's mad corner over there. <laughs> so, yeah, I can see everything that's going on. And then, um, I mean, the kit sounds really nice in here acoustically. Uh, it's not particularly ambient in here. It, it's it's uh, quite a natural sound. Still, I mean, it's still very loud. But, um, you know, I've got put my headphones on and I've got a control unit here, uh, an AVM unit, which has all my... I get levels for everybody here, which I, I can adjust. So, yeah, bass drum, kit, hi-hat ride, bass guitar, JC120 guitar, 4x12 guitar, H's keys and guitars, Mark's keys, samples and loops, mm -hmm. backing vocals, uh, Pete's vocal and bass pedals, Mark's vocals, H vocals, band click, which is you know, the click that the whole band might be listening to if we're playing to a click, and then my own click. And I can adjust all the levels to any volume I want. Mm -hmm. And then I've got, here's a reverb for the drum kit, so I can turn that up and I can have a really nice reverb on the kit. Then where I'm sitting on this drum seat, I've got a thing underneath it. It's called a butt kicker. Um, and what that does is um, it actually vibrates and makes the, um, gives me some, when I hit the bass drum, it gives it a lot of oomph and bottom end. I think it's totally responsible for the reason most of my teeth have been falling out the last couple of years from the vibration. So uh, touch wood, they're still, uh, they're all right this week. This is a Tama kit. Um, and I've, I've had this since probably 1990-ish. Um, and I, this kit used to go on the road with me, but uh, Really, for the last 20 years, it's been here. It's permanently set up here in the studio. And then I've got a duplicate kit, which is the kit that goes out on the road. And the duplicate kit also has a special mic micing system on it, whereas all these overhead mics here, little mics on the toms, on the, uh, on the road kit, they're all internal mics. So they don't get in the way of cymbals and things crashing into them and so they're all drilled into the drums so they're all internal um, but that's the uh, that's the on the road kit but this one stays here permanently the only thing I take out on the road is this snare drum which is a Ludwig Black Beauty snare drum that goes on the road and when I'm not on the road it comes back into here and, all, and my cymbals of course cymbals snare drum uh, bass drum pedals, hi hats are all very a very personal thing, and uh, they're the kind of foundation of the kit. So, if I have to go out and do a concert on a higher drum kit, to have my own snare drum and my own pedals and my own cymbals um, just make things bearable. And um, but cymbals, you know, I've taken. I think most drummers are probably the same. You can take years and years actually getting a set of cymbals together. And um, I'm, you know, my ride cymbal here, I've had that probably for, I don't know, 20 or 30 years at least. And uh, um, the crash cymbals, crash cymbals, not quite so important to me. If I tend to, they tend to get split occasionally and that's from all the serious walloping they get. 
but if they get split I can just change them for another one and they're pretty much um, replaceable really but the ride cymbals and the hi-hats are the ones that uh, are quite precious you know I've, I've always said that if I don't want to tempt fate but if I got stuff stolen I wouldn't mind if the whole drum kit got stolen particularly but if I lost my cymbals and, and my snare drum really I'd be absolutely gutted so because they've been with me a long long time I've had this setup I've had for yeah most of my career really um, but uh, it really depends on what the gig is if, if um, this this setup for me will will handle any kind of situation I'm put into um, yeah it wouldn't be very wise if I was doing jingle sessions you know for TV adverts or something turning up to the studio with a kit like this that takes you know, an hour or two to build and they say right we're just going to use hi-hat and snare drum today uh, you go ah oh. <laughs> um, so I think the main thing is getting a, a kit that's versatile and um, and this kit and the kit I take out on the road um, they're both very versatile you know if, if I if I need to do a, a different gig away from Marillion, I won't necessarily take all of these drums. I might just take a four-piece kit, which would be just snare, you know, a couple of two or three tom toms, and a couple of crashes and a ride cymbal and the hi hats. That's that's all I'd need. Um, but um, this kit can handle anything that Marillion throws at it. I'm probably quite lazy because I haven't really experimented much with other other sounds and effects and you know I've dabbled in other things electric kits and whatnot but uh, I still just love playing steam driven drums <laughs> and plus when you see all the chaos that's go that can happen that can occur in a live situation when computers go wrong it's so nice to know that there's a tom tom there if I hit it it's still there <laughs> You know, um, whereas sometimes when uh, a computer is triggering something and, and there's a, a power cut, <laughs> uh, life's too short. <laughs> no, I haven't got, well, I haven't really got room at home. I've got a snare drum and a couple of practice pads at home. And uh, I'll sit down and, and, and run through a few rudiments and warm-up exercises if I feel like it. Um, but uh, I used to have a drum kit at home, but I didn't really use it very much. Um, I mean, occasionally I'd open the windows and, and make a lot of noise just to piss off the neighbours, really. Um, but, um, no, I mean, I've got, we're, the kit is here in the studio, so, and it's only a 30-minute drive for me, so really I can come in here whenever I want and play all day if I want. So there's no point in, as I said, I haven't got room at home anyway for a, a double drum kit. <laughs> I've been with Zildjian Cymbals. Um, I think I signed my first deal with Zildjian Cymbals when I was about 18 or 19 years old. And I just love them. I mean, there's some good, good make cymbals, but uh, Zildjian have, have always kind of been my favorite. Um, so I've been with them since I was about 18. Uh, they've been really consistent so far with me. I mean, whether whatever the gig I'm doing, whether I'm just doing, you know, uh, freelancing or whether I'm playing in, in Marillion or with Steve Hackett or whoever, they've always treated me exactly the, in the, the same way. And, um, and I don't take full advantage of it. I think some people would, you know, if, I don't just get symbols for the sake of getting symbols. Um, if if I crack a symbol, they'll replace it for me, and I'll give that one back to them. So I suppose it's on a kind of permanent loan thing. Um, and then uh, Remo Drumheads, I've been with them. I don't know, thirty or forty years, I think. I signed a deal with them in in Los Angeles. A uh, long, long time ago, and the guy who, the guy, the guy's name was Rick Drum, that I had to deal with. I mean, I just, 
Your name's really Rick Drummond? Yeah, it is. <laughs> so I've got a, uh, an endorsement deal with Remo. And um, what else? Oh, with Sticks. It's uh, Shaw Sticks. That's the, the make I use. Um, it's an endorsement, it's like a trade deal, really. I mean, I still pay for them, but it's a, a very good deal I've got with them. Plus, I mean, it's my own model. It's got my name printed on it. And I just, just for a bit of fun, really, I, I, got, I got them to print left and right on the sticks. And of course, it doesn't make any difference, but it's just something I could wind up Marcus with. So, you know, he'd pa pass me a pair of sticks. And I go, Marcus, you've given me two right-handed sticks, you know. Or, or <laughs> so, um, what other deals? Uh, I was with Yamaha drums for, for a long time, a decade or two. And then I, I switched over to uh, Tama and I was with them for a while. But I don't know what's happened to Tama. I mean, when I call them these days, they don't even return my calls if I need anything. So I can't, kind of given up with them. And, um, but I, um, I don't know if it's too early to say, but I've just been offered another endorsement deal with the British Drum Company, which I'm really excited about. Um, I just hope they get through the whole situation we're in now, you know, without uh, too many disturbing things happening. But I went up to their, um, their workshop, their headquarters, and oh, it was just so wonderful to watch people making, making drums and craftsmen, real craftsmen. You know, um, not, so I, they showed me from the beginning you know, a piece of wood to the finished product, the drum. And they're, they're beautiful drums, they sound great. Um, so I hope that, that um, I mean, I was meant to have a new kit with them f by January. But of course that didn't happen because we all went, everyone went into lockdown. And they, so they're well behind on manufacturing. But, um, and I think most of the guys there are all still on furlough. So I was hoping to take, the new kit to um, real world, but I don't think that's going to be happening yet. So watch this space for that. Really just to, just always listen, always ask questions. Don't be ever scared of asking your heroes or people you admire questions, you know. Um, when I was in my late teens, I used to I was lucky, I worked in a drum shop in, uh, in the West End of London. And that drum shop, um, every drummer that was visiting London came in to say hi uh, or to buy something. And I made a point of every drummer that came in, um, I'd ask them a question, show me something, show me how you do that, show me. And uh, just listen, really, um, and, and practice. Um, you know, I think if you really are into your instrument, um, you don't need to be told to practice. Well, I, I know I, I, no one said to me, Ian, you must practice. They didn't have to tell me because I just wanted to do it. And I wanted to learn and I wanted to get, get better. Um, but yeah, ask, ask questions, um, listen, you learn off everybody. I mean, another good thing, I mean, you've got essential rudiments in drumming, which are like the scales of drumming. And I think, for me, it was important to learn those because it's a tool that helps you play. Um, but at the same time with drumming, there aren't really any rules. You know, you can, with the setup, you can set up a drum kit however you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, but you never, like any instrument, you just never, you never stop learning. Thanks for watching Marillion's official YouTube channel. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification thingamajig, so you're the first to know when we upload new content.